Hello everyone, welcome to another video of T-Tangle. In this video, let's do a question related to work energy power. So here's the question. A 20 kg body is released from rest. So a 20 kg body is released from rest in this position. So as to slide in between the rails and compresses the vertical spring. So it compresses the vertical spring when it is uh, falling down. At a distance h is equal to 1 meter. So it is being released from a position or a height of 1 meter from the starting position of the body. The rails of a frictional force of 40 Newton opposing the motion of the body. So the rails will offer a frictional force of 40 Newton which will oppose the motion of the falling body. Find the so first thing we have to find what is the velocity of the body just before striking with the spring. So we need to figure out just before it strikes the spring what would be the velocity of the body. So here in the first case we have this block at a height of 1 meter and it is falling at that height just before it touches the spring we need to figure out what is its velocity. So it is clear that once when it is at this height it will have some potential energy and when it is coming down the potential energy decreases and where does this decreased potential energy go obviously it goes into the kinetic energy of the block because we know that energy is not created or destroyed it should be conserved or constant at all the times which means that now here I can calculate what is the change in potential energy which is going to be the final let me take this height as h initially this height is h and uh, let this height be that is when the block is just touching the spring be h dash which means that the change in potential energy will be uh, the final potential energy will be mg h dash and the initial potential energy will be mg h which means this will be delta u is equal to mg and this h minus h dash it is 1 meter or h dash minus h will be minus 1 which means you will get minus mg 1 into 1. So this will be m and g values are given so 20 and 10 I will get minus 200 joules which means that the potential energy is going down by 200 joule. Now this uh, 200 joule of energy should go into the kinetic energy of the block that is the kinetic energy will be the change in kinetic energy of the block will be delta k is equal to initially uh, this finally the uh, block is coming down and it is having a velocity of v which means that the final kinetic energy is half mv square and initially the block was at rest you are releasing from this position so the energy is zero which means that change in kinetic energy is half mv square so the block got that much energy now there is one more thing here that is we know the potential energy decreases by 200 joule but the kinetic energy in this case won't increase by 200 joule why because they have given that there is a friction between the rails here so as the block slides down it is going to experience a friction which means that it has to do work against that friction so as to come down to this point which means that this 200 joule is not entirely converted into kinetic energy some energy or some work is done against the friction also so the correct way of saying it would be whatever change happened in potential energy some goes into the kinetic energy and some goes into work done against the friction which means that the kinetic energy the change in kinetic energy this value would be lesser than this 200 joules. So that is the idea. Now if I am substituting the values, so this will be 200 joule and uh, this uh, we need to, uh, uh, this I can substitute as half mv square plus the work done against the friction which will be the friction is acting, the force is 40 Newton, constant force of friction is acting 40 Newton and it is acting along this direction al along uh, 1 meter of distance which means that net work done by the friction is force into distance I mean that is 40 into 1 so you will get half mv square is equal to 160 joules if I simplify this I would get the velocity to be 4 meter per second and now you know that the 
200 joules of decrease in potential energy the entire thing is not converted into kinetic energy sum is lost how much is lost this 40 joules is lost in doing work against friction now here some of you might be wondering why even though the change in potential energy is minus 200 joule i've taken it as plus 200 joule and also that uh, work done this is work done against the friction so i'm taking it as positive not negative so if you get all sorts of all such sorts of confusion don't worry that it's not a big deal okay why because here i followed pure logic and based on that i'm writing this expression so i'm not taking in uh, the science into consideration that is so you might have uh, learned this formula in this way change in potential energy plus change in kinetic energy should be equal to work done or some of you might have learned change in potential energy change in kinetic energy plus work done is equal to zero so all those expressions all those formulas are the same they mean the same thing that is whatever decrease in potential energy in this case whatever decrease happened in potential energy should be equal to whatever increase happened in kinetic energy and work done so the energy which is lost goes into energy which is gained so in this case that is why i'm not following any sign convection because i am writing this expression as per the logic okay now that is one thing and one more thing here to be careful is about these are the changes in energy and sum of work done is equal to zero rather than the absolute values of energies is equal to zero that is one more thing where you have to be careful when substituting you need to find what is the change happened in the energy not the absolute value of potential or kinetic energy so in summary i would like to conclude that it doesn't matter what formula you are using okay just you need to go by this understanding that if initially there is no energy then finally after some changes also the body shouldn't have energy that is the sum of all the changes in the energy should be equal to zero or if the body had some energy and finally after some changes also the entire energy should be the same that is if the body lost the energy it should be there and when you add it up, add it up it should be equal to whatever the initial energy so in this case the 200 joule potential energy is converted as 160 joules of kinetic and 40 joules of work done against friction so the total energy will be conserved now for the second part of the question the maximum compression of the spring is that means the block travels an additional distance of x such that the spring is maximum compressed or at this point we can say that the velocity whichever velocity this block had that becomes completely zero and it travels this distance x and we need to figure out what is this distance so to do this again i'm going to use the same logic that here at this point we know it had some kinetic energy right that is 160 joule so whatever change in kinetic energy happened plus and also i know that when it is at this level it will have some potential energy and at this point and in this case it is coming down by that distance x which means that it poten its potential energy also decreases so whatever change in potential energy happened that energy lost should be gone into now here let's see what and all energy increase that is here we know that the spring is compressed by an amount so compressed spring is going to have a potential energy which is going to be half kx square that is the energy lost kinetic energy and potential energy lost in that case should be equal to the energy stored in the spring potential energy now one more thing is since again the, it is the same block and the same rails we know that it is going to offer a frictional force which means that some of this energy is going also going into the work done against friction which is going to be the frictional force into the displacement which is in this case it is x so this is the expression and change in kinetic energy will be what so initially it had half mv square at this point and it uh, at this point kinetic energy is zero so change in kinetic energy is half mv square plus change in potential energy should be so initially it was at this height and its height reduced by this much which means that this is the change in height so the change in potential energy is mg 
h is equal to half k x square plus f into x. Now, if you substitute this and uh, find the value for x, you will get the value of x as 0.5 meter. You will be getting a quadratic equation and you will get the value of x as 0.5 meter. Here, one more thing that uh, you can do it in one more way that if you if you take this case and this case directly that is if you ignore this case which comes in between okay that is, that is initially the block is at this point okay uh, which would be like uh, at this height which is this 1 plus x meter that means the block came down by 1 plus x meter so there is going to be some change in potential energy that is going to be mg 1 plus x the change in potential energy will be 1 plus x mg 1 plus x why because initially it is at this height and it came down by this height so that is the change in potential energy and that should be equal to we know that that change in energy is going directly into the potential energy stored in the spring which is half k x square plus also some amount of energy is going into work done against the friction this time it is going to be the frictional force into the displacement which is this 1 plus additional x which will be f into 1 plus x now if you do this thing uh, this uh, solving by this equation also you will get the same answer doesn't matter so it's just that you have to use your logic properly now for the third part in the question the distance h dash through which the block is rebounded up from the maximum compressed position so okay what happened is the block was completely uh, the block completely compressed the spring and then the potential energy stored in the spring and from this point what happened is the spring will rebound such that the block will be pushed and it will be pushed to a height h dash and we need to figure out what is this height h dash so this part in the question i'll uh, leave it to you so let me see how many of you are able to solve it and once you solve just uh, put down the answers in the comments down below we'll be discussing it and i'll see you all in the next video thanks for watching